And so, Ginevra, if you can activate your webcam and yes. uh, microphone, uh, yes. I will quickly present you. Ginevra Carbone is uh, a PhD student at the University of Trieste. So she in, she's also uh, a fellow of uh, our Artificial Intelligence Student Society. And she will present us uh, a very recent work, which she, she presented last week at New Rips 2020. New Rips, for who doesn't know, uh, is uh, the one of the top conferences in uh, neural processing, so neural networks and deep learning. And uh, here it is. She, the title of the work is Robustness of Bayesian Neural Networks to Gradient Blaze Attacks. So I think she will do a quick introduction on Bayesian Neural Networks to quickly update everyone of, on these models and then go on presenting her work. Yes, exactly. Thanks for the introduction and also for organizing this event today. And yes, as Marco said, I'm starting from an introduction to Bayesian Neural Networks. So let me use a very easy example. Suppose that uh, we want to train an image classifier. So uh, we have our neural network with a weight matrix W and uh, which receives an input image X that is classified by um, producing a probability vector. So uh, meaning that the, this probability uh, has, uh, has the dimension of the number of, of the classes and um, all of the components of this vector sum up to one. So they uh, allow us to perform uh, the final classifications. So what you will do in a, a classical deterministic neural network is to learn the best fixed parameters for the weight matrix. While uh, what we do in Bayesian neural networks is uh, we learn an ensemble of parameters that are very likely to fit the data. So this means that uh, each one of the weights in this uh, matrix W is a random variable and we want to learn the distribution of these random variables. So we do this by means of Bayesian inference, which uh, is based, of course, on uh, Bayes' theorem. And uh, we do this by uh, placing a prior over all the parameters, computing the likelihood of uh, these weights with respect to the uh, observed data, which is indicated by uh, D. And then uh, want to compute our posterior distribution, uh, which, uh, thanks to this theorem, we know that um, it is proportional to the product of these two terms. So the problem is that um, in the case of uh, Bayesian neural networks, obtaining the exact posterior distribution is an intractable problem. And uh, what we do instead is we rely on approximate inference methods. And here I'm just uh, mentioning a couple of methods that we used in our work. And uh, they are in particular variational inference, which is uh, an optimization based approach, and Hamiltonian Monte Carlo, which is a, a sampling based approach. OK, so uh, now I want to talk uh, about the adversarial robustness of BNNs, which is the uh, basically the last point that was touched in the previous talk during the conclusions. And um, of course, before talking about the robustness of uh, Bayesian neural networks, I need to uh, define a Bayesian attack. And um, what we would like to do in the case of Bayesian neural networks is to uh, attack attack the predictive distribution that we obtain in the end. And uh, this distribution is called the posterior predictive distribution. So uh, in general, a predictive distribution is the distribution of new observations given the past ones. For example, here a new observation is X star and the past observations are indicated by D, which is which represents the, the training data. And in particular, the posterior predictive distribution is simply the marginalization of the predictive distribution with respect to the posterior. So in the, in the end, if we want to perform a prediction on a new observation, uh, we simply consider an ensemble of predictions that we obtain from deterministic networks whose weights are sampled from the posterior distribution. So, um, for example, suppose that we want to define the Bayesian version of the FGSM attack, which was presented in the uh, last talk. Uh, what we do is um, we attack the posterior predictive distribution by moving in the direction of the greatest expected loss. So we do exactly what we would do in the deterministic case, but on an ensemble of posterior samples. OK. 
Okay, so this is the main contribution in our work, and um, I oh, I was planning on giving a like a very broad sketch of the proof, but I think it would be too technical. So let me just explain uh, this theorem in general. We have a fully trained uh, overparameterized Bayesian neural network on a prediction problem with a certain data manifold, which is called MD and is embedded in uh, the RD space. And then we have a posterior weight distribution PWD. Now, if we assume that uh, this manifold is almost everywhere smooth, then in the large data limit, uh, the expected loss gradients vanish on, on this manifold. So by fully trained, we mean that uh, all the deterministic neural networks in the ensemble are at full convergence of the SGD algorithm. By overparameterized, we mean that uh, there is an infinite number of hidden neurons in each one of the layers of the BNN. Then the data manifold is simply the support of the data distribution, PD. And finally, by large data limit, we mean that uh, we are supposing that our training data is infinite. So we have uh, a few very strong assumptions for proving this theorem, but um, in the end, the, the result is really uh, like strong and important. In fact, this theorem means that uh, in the limit of infinite samples from the posterior, all gradient-based attacks are ineffective against Bayesian neural networks. And um, now I would like to uh, show you a few um, experimental results that we got to prove you that uh, even though the assumptions are very strong, in practice we observe this vanishing behavior on uh, real data sets. So let me skip the proof. OK. OK, in this uh, first plot, um, basically we are showing what happens towards the overparameterized limit, meaning that both uh, the number of training inputs that are shown on uh, the right and the number of hidden neurons, which are shown on uh, um, the upper part of each uh, subplot, uh, are increasing. And here we are working on the half moon data set, which has only two components. So we are showing uh, both of them. And we are computing, uh, we are using uh, 36 BNNs trained with HMC uh, to compute uh, these uh, expected gradients on 100 test points. And uh, as you can see, as the number of hidden neurons and training inputs increase, um, these uh, components tend to shrink towards zero. Now, uh, the second example uh, just uh, wants to give you an insight on uh, what uh, it visually means that uh, these gradients are vanishing. So uh, here we are computing the um, basically the, the expected loss gradients and also their uh, infinite norms, uh, which are shown uh, on the uh, upper part of the images on uh, two data set, um, NIST on the first row and fashion MNIST on the second row. And um, the red images are the actual perturbations that we are adding to these images. And as you can see, for an increasing number of samples, uh, their norms tend to zero. OK, so this uh, third plot um, is about the vanishing gradients components. So as we did in the first one, we are computing the uh, expected loss gradients on uh, other two uh, data sets, which are MNIST and Fashion MNIST, on uh, 1K test points. And notice here that uh, each one of the images belonging to these data sets have uh, 28 by 28 pixels, so a total of 784 components, which uh, are shown for all the test points on the Y axis, while on the X axis, we are simply increasing the number of samples from the posterior. And also in this case, you can see that uh, these components uh, tend uh, towards zero. OK, now uh, the last plot uh, is very interesting because uh, we noticed that um, Bayesian neural networks show uh, a positive correlation between robustness and accuracy on the test set. So uh, let me describe these images in details. Um, first of all, we are using um, on the first row the MNIST dataset, on the second row the fashion MNIST dataset, and um, on the first column uh, HMC uh, BNNs, on the second one VI BNNs. 
And um, here we launched a very big research on both deterministic neural networks and Bayesian neural networks. And the deterministic ones are shown um, as the blue dots, while the red dots are the Bayesian ones. And basically here we have on the x-axis the test accuracy and on the y-axis uh, uh, our definition of robustness, which is uh, one minus the softmax difference. By softmax difference, we mean here the um, average difference between all the softmax values that we obtained on uh, the original images and the adversarially perturbed images. So as you can see, uh, in the case of Bayesian neural networks, there is a positive correlation between these two uh, values, which uh, does not hold for deterministic networks. So mm, this is a very interesting uh, property. Now, finally, to the conclusions. Um, so there are many limitations, of course, in this setting because we uh, had um, strong assumptions on both the uh, architecture of the BNNs, which has to be overparameterized and trained on infinite data. And we also supposed uh, for our proof that the um, ensemble should be drawn from the two posterior distribution. And uh, finally, we assumed uniform priors on uh, the network. But uh, what we observed in practice is that uh, if we use very uh, accurate models, we already uh, have this vanishing behavior towards the limit. And also that uh, even if you are using cheap approximate methods like variational inference, for example, or uh, vague Gaussian priors, we um, also uh, obtain um, a behavior that resembles the one of the theory. And uh, finally, we also uh, found uh, this um, trend between uh, accuracy and robustness, which could guide us uh, in uh, choosing the, the most effective Bayesian neural networks in terms of uh, of adversarial robustness, of course. So that's all for the presentation, and thank you for staying here until the end. If you have any questions. Let me just double check if someone yeah. has got questions so far. I do have uh, one, at yeah. least, which is, um, so for the prediction, it means that you have to go through the, through the forward pass several times and then average mm -hmm. or, some, or yeah. something like that, I don't know, with some strategy, I reckon. Um, do you reckon that this can be computationally a problem, for example, if obviously if this image recognition, it might be not a big deal, but for example, in the future for um, reinforcement, let's say, or when you have to make a decision quite quickly, so like self-driving cars or something like that, do you, do you see a potential uh, limitation or you don't think so? Uh, well, the uh, ensemble predictions on new samples is pretty fast, actually, even if you use a high number of samples. Of course, this can impact the computation of adversarial attack on the Bayesian neural network, so on the posterior predicted, because uh, a few adversarial attacks are uh, already very expensive themselves, and so if you add up the <laughs> add up the expensiveness of the method to the fact that you need to uh, use a high number of samples, then um, yes, it could be uh, computationally expensive. Uh, but the main challenge from um, a computational point of view is actually performing efficient Bayesian inference in this case. This is the most expensive part. Okay, but this you mean during the the building of an actor, so the when you're training, training it. Yes. But yes. my concern when were you actually using it? The yes. Network, so what do, do you think is not it's not a deal, big deal? Uh, it depends on the application. So if you want to compute, for example, a very expensive attack, I don't know, Carlinian Wagner attack, then the uh, computational time that uh, you spend due to the attack is higher than the one coming from the, the ensemble prediction, basically. Okay. And um, also FGSM, which is the fastest one, the, the easiest one, is very fast also in the Bayesian case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any, any question um, from uh, the audience? I have one. Uh, if no other questions show up in the chat. So Ginevra, uh, just to enlighten me a little bit on the field of uh, uh, research in uh, Bayesian neural networks. 
Yes. Is it um, how, how common is it for uh, Bayesian and neural networks uh, papers to to be uh, to results to be present uh, to be presented on uh, uh, large data sets like uh, Cypher 10 or uh, the most common ImageNet? Uh, it's pretty uncommon because uh, obtaining highly high accuracy on uh, the test set of these data sets is uh, diffi difficult, very difficult. And also, uh, we tried experimenting with Cypher 10, but uh, we were not able to reach uh, high accuracy. And um, of course, uh, many people are working on making Bayesian inference more scalable from for Bayesian neural networks. Uh, but it is still a challenge. So it's it's not a problem concerning maybe uh, it's something more like uh, you don't have uh, uh, algorithms, training algorithms that uh, scale well, uh, or is it that uh, Bayesian neural networks, how they are uh, thought of now? So maybe the initial distributions of uh, the priors are not optimized for a large scale training? Uh, actually, I suppose that uh, this would be less of a problem in the case of very uh, big neural net, uh, big, uh, sorry, data sets, because uh, as the number of training points uh, increases, uh, basically your prior counts much and much less. So the, the problem in this case is scalability, of course because you would need to train very big and deep neural networks and inference would be too expensive. And also they require more fine tuning compared to uh, deterministic networks. So of course this becomes okay. a problem. Um, Thank you very much. Share my screen, okay. <laughs> uh, there is another question from Ricardo. Yeah. Um, he asked, one of the feature of the BNN are the confidence interval over a prediction. Does this interval increase in the adversarial object? And is the prediction with lower probability than on the deterministic NN? Uh, that's a good question. And it depends on how you are training your uh, Bayesian neural network. So it depends on the method that you're using, on how you are uh, basically building the architecture. For example, um, you could use uh, like a scale all the um, logits uh, um, vectors of your network, the final ones with uh, logarithms, and get uh, or um, or don't use it and can um, get basically a different uh, confidence in your predictions uh, and obtain different results in the test accuracy, but also the adversarial robustness. So. It depends um, a lot on the architecture and also on the method that you use. So I don't know in, in particular in our um, experiments because we didn't check this property, but yes, in general, it can vary a lot, I suppose. Is that okay for you, Ricardo, the, the answer? Okay, perfect. Um, like it would also just to add something. Yeah, yeah. It's a very no good question, and actually, um, I think that uh, one of the main aims uh, would be also to get uh, low confidence in uh, predictions of out of sample data. So if you get samples that were really uh, far from your training data and really different, then you would like to, uh, of course, have more confusion in the probability vector. And this is another field of research that, uh, yes, some people work on. Well, perfect. I think, thank you so much for the brilliant presentation. Thank you. you made uh, clear some topic that is not easy at all, and that is really, really good. Um, I personally, quite enjoyed it and um, well I think Marco do you want to say some word to conclude this session uh, from my side I do want to thank all the speakers of today it's been great so for all of them um, Professor Sweeney in the morning Professor Bortolussi Professor Cavallaro and um, is it Dr Ginevra can can I say Dr Ginevra <laughs> You are opening like the Jill Biden. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, okay. But as long as we know each other, I say to you, Ginevra, thank you so much to be here to um, thank you. make this happen. I think it was really, really cool and super interesting. So um, do you want to say some final word before we conclude, Marco? Yeah, just a quick invitation to all the PhD students, uh, bachelor students, master students, uh, professional master students, maybe from CISA or ICTP, if there are some. Uh, an invitation to join our uh, association. If you enjoyed uh, this event, we are, we are as uh, Andrea told this morning, we are an association which is currently growing. We are in need of uh, uh, collaboration for uh, new events. The hackathon we will be uh, conducting probably on March and uh, other stuff. Also, we are open for ideas for other seminars or uh, conferences or roundtables. So uh, if you want to join to support our uh, to support our activities, the uh, the subscription is open for all uh, students in the whole of Europe and it only costs five euros per year. So it's a wonderful opportunity to be our members also for all the events and uh, activities and uh, services we offer to uh, our members. Thank you very much to Luca, to Andrea and to Ginevra for being here today. Uh, I will uh, write in this chat, uh, so uh, keep, keep in touch with the, on, on the teams. I will write the links to the videos that will be or the, the recordings which will be up, uploaded on YouTube this uh, this evening. So right now we will be starting with the upload. So if you want to maybe re uh, re uh, view some some of the videos of today, you will be able to do it in a few hours. So thank you all for being here and uh, get, get get in touch with us via our website www.ai2s.it. I'll be writing that in the chat as well. Thank you guys. Bye bye to everybody. Bye. bye, -bye. Need nothing to say. Okay.